Hello everyone, welcome to this new video. So today I will show you how to create your own Copilot. What exactly is Copilot? That's the first question. Copilot is this new and extremely helpful tool created by GitHub and based on GPT-4. So it's an AI that autocomplete a lot of your code. So it means you can have this kind of use case that you can see here, where you start typing a function and the whole function is written by AI for you. So it speed up your um, coding capabilities and you also have a chat on the side where you can ask small, small things about the code. Maybe if you want to understand uh, some code part, if you want to debug them, if you want to write tests about this code part and much more. So today we will not be using GitHub Copilot because it's actually expensive. Uh, it's expensive for you as an individual and for a business if you have a lot of people, but it's also not a pretty good solution when you want to keep your code for yourself. So if you use the GitHub Copilot individual, for example, your data will not be excluded from the trading data. So you will have, you are paying GitHub, but they are still using your code to train your model. So if you want to avoid those two things, paying GitHub for this service, and also getting your code into the training data of these models, you can use um, the solution that we present in this video. So this video is actually made for you. So let just get started. I will show you exactly the tool we'll use, the process we'll use, and uh, how we will sort that. First, the tool we'll be using um, Olama. I think I present Olama a lot of time on this channel. Olama is actually this pretty interesting tool that help you run models locally. So you can run a lot of open source models, including Llama 2, Code Llama, Gypsy Coder, Star Coder, and a lot of other models. So it means we will be using Olama to run uh, an open source model that's purely made for coding and uh, we will connect it to our VS code. And to connect that to our VS code, we need an extension. And for that, we have this extension called continue. This extension is actually pretty interesting as well. You can install it into your VS code and connect it maybe to GPT-4, uh, to, to Google API, to Entropic, and a lot of other providers, including local models. Same for GPT, it's same for code GPT and much more tools. So, but we will just be using continue for the moment and we'll be connecting it to a local API that we have that will be serving a local model. So this is the stack we'll be using and we have a last tool that we'll be using that is open, GUI, uh, open web UI. This open web UI is a UI for the Olama thing. So we can actually pull model, download models, and try it out before choosing the model that suits best our needs. So we have the possibility to browse different models to check if the generation, uh, con the content generated by, those mo by this model are better for us, are good for what we want to do before integrating it into our VS Code extension and using it into our code. So we have a lot of models here. We can use the latest model from Google, this Gemma uh, uh, model. I actually made a video um, this last week, um, showing how to do this gemma locally. You can check it out here. Uh, and also, um, we have much more choices when it comes to models. We can use maybe star coder. If you like star coder, we have star coder. Uh, we have Zipseek as well. Zipseek is a really great model for coding. And we have the good part is we have the 1 billion parameter Zipseek model. So we will be using the 1 billion parameter Zipseek model when we have only the CPU and when we cannot use the GPU of our computer. So the 1 billion model is actually useful when we just have a CPU when we don't have a GPU. Okay, so this other stack. So let's get started with the code itself. Let's go, let's create a new folder called Copilot. And in this folder, uh, open it with VS Code. And now let's create some small file. We'll be using Docker for that. Uh, for what we are trying to do now. So ju let's just create a Docker Compose, the YAML file. In this file, we will base a lot of codes. I, I will just provide this file at the end of the video. Um, yes, we will need uh, some Docker file that we have here. So let's just come to this Docker Compose file first, uh, copy all the content here, and paste it into our file here. And beside that, we need the API as well. So we need to go to the API part here, copy this part, uh, this part, part, the part that we will be exposing so that um, our continue can 
connect to this uh, to our local uh, model. We also need this if we need if you have a GPU. So, but if you don't have, you don't really need it. But if you have a GPU, you can copy this part here for the deploy part and actually paste it here as well. Yes, and discount you can just put it at one um, to avoid uh, issues because we don't have access to a lot of uh, environmental variables. Um, yeah, and otherwise we can just use this script here. This script called run compose here. Actually, uh, set these variables to you, and uh, you can use them with this enable GPU and specify the count or. Yeah, and it will actually set up this variable to you and run this Docker Compose for you as well. So, but in our case, we'll just do this. And this is enough for us. Um, yes, so to run this, it is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. We go to the terminal and we do a Docker Compose up in detached mode. And it will pull the images. And um, yes, it may take much more time for you. I actually have this model actually uh, in these images in my Docker, so it's not that long. But now, if we come here in Docker, we'll see that these two images are running. This is the Olama, and this port is the port we will be using to connect. So Olama gives you an API, the, an, an API that's compatible with um, um, ChatGPT API, actually, or OpenAI APIs. So you can use it maybe directly into your application as your whole API, or you can use it. Uh, as we were using it right now, coupled to external tools like uh, Continuo and others. And for that, we need to ex install the extension Continue. So let's look here, Continue. Yeah, Continue here, install it. And in the meantime, we need to test our web UI and download some models. So Logging, okay, perfect. So I have an account and I have these two models already downloaded. But I will show you how to download this model as well. It just comes here, you go to models and you click here. You come here and you choose the model that you want to pull. So let's say we want to pull this Llama 2 billion parameter, for example. We copy this part after the run and we paste it in, in this section here. You can actually just run these and download this model via you in the command line. It's not really a problem. You can, if you install Olama, you can just use this Olama command to run and pull these images if you want. But we wanted to have this GUI so that we can test and play around with different uh, possibilities to choose maybe the best model, maybe between Dipsy uh, Coder and Llama Coder as well. But yeah, you can actually do that without having to use uh, or Open uh, UI. And in that case, if you don't want to use Open UI, you can just delete this service here and uh, this disappear and this the volume as well. And then you just have Olama that you can run and you can just run it with Docker and you will have only Olama and you will just have the API uh, point, uh, access point. Okay, so when the image is downloaded and everything is okay, I hope everything's okay. Yeah, perfect, this is verifying. And then, yeah, perfect, everything's uh, okay now. We can come here and choose the model that we want. Let's say we want to use Tima and uh, we want it to write Let's say, uh, write a sort, not another sorting algorithm, um, a search algorithm in Python. Uh, o, la, o, o, and log, and hopefully it understand the complexity. I'm not sure it will understand, but hopefully it understand the complexity. Uh, yes. It should be uh, it should be less than that. This is the complexity of a search algorithm of a of a sort algorithm. I think the search is just O N, yeah, and maybe can be less than that. A log N, I think. Yes, so that's perfect. So it does that exactly, and it's extremely fast. That's amazing. So we'll be using maybe we can try different other models. So we can take the same prompt, um, give it to another model. Just open this again and choose this uh, Kurt Slama and run the same command. Just remove the N. So we have complexity. So we will see which model perform, give the best result, and we'll use it into our continue thing. So uh, in the meantime, we have this continue here that's actually installed. Uh, I think, yes, we have continue that's installed. 
and we can do continue can we okay so now we can do this and do this continue and do a lot of thing with the continue thing we can um we can actually show this view for continue and ask the question questions that we have or whatever um so what i had i had configured this launch before so let me just delay the models and i will show you how to configure them again so you come here and you click on this ad and this ad will show you this list and you choose the ulama list uh directly here and uh here you just choose maybe you can actually choose the model that you want to use directly here um here for example you can choose auto detect as well uh oh yeah it will detect the list of models that you have into your ulama and uh pull, 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 push, push them into the yeah, into the possible uh model that you have as you can see here we have Kima, we have tipsic you have code llama to uh, 7b um yeah so i think yes this is just the, the the algorithm i'm not sure which one is efficient enough um so maybe let's try it out and see the difference between those two models um but i feel like google model is faster than um the llama model so let's just see which one is interesting this actually explain what he's doing so i think jam Gemma is better actually i think Gemma is better um than the maybe code llama so we will be using Gemma. so you just come here you choose Gemma, and maybe you can ask something pretty simple uh like um you can do this you can come oh sorry it's not here yes so maybe the question that we had here we can still have to ask the same question here and uh, we'll get the response um, from the model. And the other thing we can do is actually, oh, pretty nice. We have kind of the same thing here uh, and use this. It's pretty simple. So you have this uh, useful assistant directly into your visual code and it's extremely fast. That's the best part. The best part is it's extremely fast and you have the possibility to actually um, fine tune this specific small model to your code base and have a uh, model that's much more uh, relevant, that give much more relevant responses based, based on your code. And uh, yeah, so they just test something else. We just create a file here. Let's say we, we call this file tested by. Yes, so um, come here and just start writing something like, um, um, no, let to, I don't know, um, what can we do? Create a Flask server running on port 5002, something pretty specific, okay? Let's try something that specific. And uh, we can just do this, um, do this and do continue, click a date and say, write this code. Look at this. This is pretty amazing. Extremely fast, right? This is extremely fast. And uh, maybe we could write out, um, but we will need the people star and much more things, but this should work normally. So this is main function, just creating this app and it should normally work when you have the, the world set up for your code. And the good part is the speed of the Gemma, maybe the Gemma model, but this actually depends on the model you use because if we choose this code llama and we ask the same thing, uh, like just create this, this flag server and uh, we do continue quick edit, write this code. We will see that it's becoming a bit slow and the response is not that good. So Gemma 2B is actually much more interesting than the code llama 7B, I think, even in coding. And also, um, yeah. Look, this is pretty slow and it's configuring a lot of things. I just want to have a simple server. I don't know yeah, why I have all these routes. They aren't relevant for me right now. Um, anyway, so I think Gemma is much more better than uh, Code Llama in this specific use case, in this specific case. 
Um, yes. So, yes. Uh, so afterward, you have this pretty small, interesting button that can just you can just use to accept the code or reject the code that has been generated by your model. And uh, yeah, you can follow up here and ask much more things about uh, the context that you are in. And um, yeah, so that's it. So I hope this video was interesting for you. I hope you learned something new. And um, in the upcoming video, we'll do much more complicated things like fine tuning models and using these models into real AI applications. Um, yeah, so if you're interested by this topic, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any question, if you have uh, any problem with the code or whatever, you can just comment down below. I try my best to answer all the comments that are um, helping people to use AI tools. And um, yeah, so um, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Ciao.